in this whole speech. There would be nothing at all authentic about me standing before you and preaching about study and discipline and self-control. And that's because I'm someone who benefited largely from natural talent. And upon reflection, I'm not sure that I'm somebody who really earned it. Nonetheless, I do not think that my best teachers will ever remember me as an archetype of academic success. And neither should you. But perhaps, if I'm being a little optimistic, they will remember me for something else, which is in some ways a more profound connection to the endeavor of learning itself. So here is my thesis for today. I will not tell you to go and study hard, or to rack up service habits, or tell you to enjoy your classes more. I'm not qualified. Instead, I will simply postulate a reason for you to keep trying, to keep going. I'm here to convince you that there is more. What you continue to begrudgingly see is a monotonous daily routine, the never-ending onslaught of more work and more failure, the melancholy blur of today into tomorrow. I insist that no aspect is ordinary, and you are by no means defeated. Once, there was nothing. No one to watch sunsets or listen to music or to dream, and that is until the universe made you a part of itself. Call you an ontological necessity or an impossibility. Call that science or poetry or God. You are the only known means by which the universe can experience itself. Your life is the blink of an eye in an infinite history, the single instant when stardust can know things, and it is your job to decide right now, every day, what is worthwhile to be known. This is your unavoidable human obligation. This is why every single life is noble and of paramount importance. It is that this Burden, the greatest gift of being human. That is what I will tell you today. I tried to distill for you this beautiful quality of humanity into three cardinal virtues. Hear them, remember them, excel at them, for I believe it is these that make you human. The first virtue is curiosity. And many people, and I'm sure many of the people in your classes who perhaps you admire for their academic achievement or ability are motivated by grades. But no matter what it is that you are good at, maybe you are the best in your grade at playing basketball or writing essays or playing piano. Maybe you're a real prodigy. Maybe you won't meet anyone better than you at that thing until you turn 18. It doesn't matter. If you keep going, then one day soon you will compete at a level where you are now just considered average, likely below average. Either that or you give up and it never meant anything at all. Even if you are in the top 0.1% of something, there are still a million people better than you are. This might sound grim, but truly it is liberating. It means that having natural talent at something is not what makes it worthwhile for you to do. This means that all you need for it to be worth you trying at something, endeavoring at something, be it a sport or a subject or an instrument, the only true motivation is your curiosity for that thing. How can I become better? What would it allow me to do? What makes this interesting? What new things can I explore? You will always run out of talent, but you will never run out of questions. And it is exactly these questions that make these pursuits worthwhile. That's curiosity, the first of the three things that make you more. Your second great virtue is creativity. It's your self-expression, it's how we define ourselves. It's when we synthesize, when we create something new, when we come up with a clever solution to a puzzle, to a societal issue, to a political argument. Creativity is the means by which you convert the fruits of your curiosity. You ask questions and you explore and you discover. Creativity is how you make something of it. Having a strong creative drive, which is what I'm encouraging you to do, can make the things that you used to dread, coming up with something to write about, or solving a problem, it can make you so compelled to do those things that they are necessary, that you need to do them. You can go to bed, and you might not believe me, but you can go to bed thinking simultaneously, I hate this essay, and it's so stupid, but at the same time thinking that I can't wait to wake up in the morning and finish this idea that I've been writing. We all have an intrinsic drive to build something, to make something, 
And that is creativity. Now, if you build your curiosity, as I've instructed, and focus on your creativity, and put in the effort, then regardless of the discipline, academic, athletic, whatever, you will have the motivation and the power to progress every day. These qualities are how you separate yourself from everything else. We are the curious, we are the creative, that is how we succeed and grow and change and think. This combination, our curiosity and our creativity, is it unstoppable? No, not quite. I had some of the darkest moments of my life in year 11 and 12, and so did the people around me. Nights that felt like they would never end. Times when I thought the unspeakable things would never yield. Curiosity and creativity are not the reason that you will keep going then. Empathy, this is the quality that completes us. Some of you know, some of you don't. I'm sure some of you may think you know. Empathy is the force by which we transcend ourselves. It's the mechanism whereby you step outside your own tunnel vision on life. For one moment, you step outside thinking about what you're trying to achieve, what you want right now, and say, what do they want? What are they thinking? What are they feeling? It takes only a fraction of a second to do that, to break out. But every time you do, you become stronger. You aren't just you anymore. Empathy is the reason we do not have to be alone. Each of us taking turns, empathizing, stimulating one another's lives, making allowances, being understanding, feeling understood. On your own, sure, hope may seem thin, but together we are the collective consciousness of the universe. Revel in that. Remember them. Curiosity, creativity, and empathy. These are your intrinsic strengths as a person, as an individual, and as a collective. They are the glue between me and you, and between your once friends, and the person you'll talk to for the first time on a school camp some years in the future. Now I have just one final claim to make before I go. Where better to develop these virtues than right here? You are perfectly situated already. It's because here, among you, resides the custodians of these virtues. It is the responsibility of your teachers to engage your curiosity and promote your creativity, to constantly stimulate you and question you and challenge you, but most of all, to empathize with you, to understand you, to believe in you even when you don't believe in yourself. They will devote their lives to these causes. And it's an award ceremony, after all, so why not? Mr. Andrew Buck, Mr. Tad Kuzma, Mrs. Van Kirsty Van de Kolb, Mr. Rohit Bhatnagar, Mr. Philip Corson, these are some of the brilliant people who, when I despaired and when I didn't ever want to do anything ever again and I never wanted to try, and a single thing saw me, reminded me what was worth caring about and compelled me forward. Decades from now when it seems that all is lost, these are the people I will remember because they will have given me the strength to keep going. Give them a chance. Let your teachers pull you from the dark. This is our way forward. For this fleeting interval in the history of everything, when stardust can see itself, I hope it will do so with a burning curiosity, an unbounded creativity, and perhaps, if we are so very hopeful, even the hint of a smile.